What's going on, guys? I'm here with Nicole today. Nicole, wave hi. What's up? What's going hi. on? Hi. So uh, Nicole has been, and I'm so happy, she reached out to me in the comments on my YouTube channel saying the experiences she had with her three pregnancies. So although Nicole had some problems early on in her life related to diet and various problems, eventually at a later point in her life, she did try uh, having a pregnancy on both a standard diet, a vegan diet, and then back to a paleo diet. So she has three very interesting and different experiences that we can kind of relate to the importance of having animal foods in the diet in regards to uh, ease of birth, pregnancy, health of the mother's milk, and health of the child. So uh, I'm going to kind of let Nicole take it away here, uh, starting with, I guess, uh, you know, what happened when you're trying those diet pills, right? Thank you, Frank. Thank you for the nice introduction <laughs> that you did for me. Uh, yes, I started like a dieting, yo-yo dieting in my early teens. And when I was 16, so throughout my 15, 16, that, that year, 15 to 16, I was uh, taking diet pills. And um, then I ended up having an append my appendix removed. So it was quite a, an emergency surgery. And uh, then I kept um, still like um, dieting because um, like I couldn't lose weight properly. I would always gain it back. Like um, my my diet was heavy on carbs. Like I would say in Italy, we do eat a lot of grains and stuff. So I would have like a, a bowl of cereals or eventually a croissant before school for breakfast and then pasta and maybe for dinner, like some some cheese or something like that, but not that much more bread or legumes, things like that. Because I think in the 90s, the, the focus of the diet in order to lose weight is that you have to go low fat. So I was really low fat um, for all these years and I was over exercising, over training, doing just a lot of cardio basically, and then eating very little fat, very high carbs. And what happened at 23, after all these years of like yo-yo dieting and low fat diet, I ended up losing my period for quite a while, more than a year. And so I was hospitalized at 23 for like having a lot of tests done onto me just to understand why I was not ovulating. So, and eventually they, they couldn't give me an answer, but basically I just kept being on birth control pill for many years because first of all, I had bad acne. And second, it was just the only way to get my period because when you are on birth control, you kind of have this, a fake cycle let's say mm. and then after that I started to work on for a cruise line so I went on cruise ships for uh, quite many months at a time and um, like the work kept my mind off my dieting and things like that because just uh, I wanted to reach my goals made uh, make a career out of it so the diet and the physique and all my let's say obsession a little bit I put it aside but still it was all always at the back of my mind and uh, this for, was for a couple of years and then when at 26 I stopped and uh, for a work like um, on the cruise and I got engaged to my husband and we were in London at that time and um, I just thought uh, I mean we want to start a family so I need to be healthy I need to focus on other things in life it's time to move on I, I felt like I always had this mentality uh, like I always wanted to look like my mom because she's she's a very tall woman and very slim just by nature with no effort so I always had this like I want to be this slim but I, I understand like that uh, that was a bit silly and a bit too much so I tried to be healthier uh, but for what was my let's say my my opinion of of eating healthy and so uh, at the time I got pregnant, at, uh, I was 28. Sorry to interrupt you, but at, at no real point throughout your life did you eat a substantial amount of meat or fish. Uh, are you able to remember maybe, was your mother's diet similar to yours? Well, no, it was more balanced because my mom always say moderation is the key for everything. So she said, she said that my diet was extreme. 
because I would stay away from animal product as much as I could, especially meat. I had this thought that meat was fattening, was not good for you. So I would rather go for some low fat cheese uh, than having proper meat. So maybe meat was something social for me, like out of social situation in a restaurant or uh, in a friend's house, then I would eat some meat, but it was not my, uh, not my desire. I would say that meat was fattening and bulky. So I would say no. Maybe I had like low fat yogurt with a ton of sugar in it. I, I thought that was healthy. So that was my, my animal food. Very, very low mm. fat and as, as little as I could. I was focused much more on grains. Whole grains are so good for you. Brown rice, brown pasta, this type of thing. Do you know if your mother like really ate a lot of animal foods for bre- like maybe eggs for breakfast, a lot of fish for dinner? Do you know? No, I don't know that, but um, she eats anything and in in small quantities. But she always had butter in the fridge. Butter, I would never touch it. But she always had it in the fridge. It was available to me. But I had no. This is just way too much fat. I can't. I, I, maybe I would have like a more olive oil or not this type of fat, healthy fat. I thought just butter is evil. Red meat is evil. Uh, so, yeah, very different. I changed my mind completely, which is great. Yeah, so let's go back to the, you were, when I interrupted you, you were about to talk about the first pregnancy. Yeah, then I started to practice a little bit more of an intuitive eating sort of things through this pregnancy. So I would say that uh, I still was quite heavy on carbs, but I would eat and I would crave some cottage cheese. So some dairy, I would crave that. And I would try like this um, British dairy, which is really good, like cheddar. And maybe sometimes I would go like to, to find the, more, uh, the more, more tasty ones or like uh, not so commercial to go, go a little bit more gourmet on these things. So I would have some animal food, occasionally meat, like if my husband would cook, because I didn't even know how to cook meat like uh, except from like breast chicken on a grill nothing special so uh, I started yes to to follow a little bit this advice of moderation is the key but I I remember like having almost never like red meat I would really not not have that so I would say vegetarian type of pregnancy but you were craving you were really acting on those ricotta cheese and cheese cravings yeah yeah and those are pretty were those very those are very strong and frequent yeah exactly so i would eat basically every day i would Mm. have every day like a big big portion of cottage cheese or other type of dairy and then yeah my let's say my usual diet plus some full fat Mm -hmm. dairy if any of you guys are curious Dairy is actually nutritionally complete. I do have a video uh, called Dairy Friend or Foe, but it just pretty much summarizes that. It literally has all the fat soluble vitamins in it. So dairy in itself can pretty much be a nutritionally complete source for you know a pregnant woman craving something. Uh, but uh, I guess the next thing is to go over is the kind of like the, I guess the delivery experience, right? Yeah, exactly. The, the pregnancy was fine. I was uh, on a healthy weight. I didn't gain a lot of weight. I was feeling healthy and fit. And the, the delivery itself went well. I had a natural delivery in the hospital. Uh, the labor wasn't too long overall as a, for a first baby. And uh, after, so when the baby came, it was healthy, it was a healthy weight. And so we started this uh, breastfeeding process right in the hospital and then at home. Because I really wanted to breastfeed. I, I thought it's, it's such a, like a peculiar thing, mother and baby, is so special. So I want to do that. I didn't buy any formula just in case or things like that. I really wanted to, to, to give it a try. And, uh, and then a little bit, uh, I was a little bit overwhelmed because everybody tried to give me advice. You have to drink this. You have to do that. Uh, don't eat that. It's going to make him gassy or colicky. So it was a little bit overwhelming. And at the end, I decided that my diet would be a big bowl of brown rice with some greens, the bark, and then maybe a little bit of meat, because at that point, everybody was telling me, you have to eat some meat to have a good amount of good milk, nutritious milk. So I would listen to these people and start to incorporate some chicken, nothing special, really. I could have done better on animal food. 
And so this was my diet. And uh, you I stopped like all the cheese. Now you were I didn't crave of... it that much. And you know, there is this controversial, controversial thought that dairy makes the baby fussy because of the casein in the milk. Mm-hmm. So basically, the uh, the casein protein goes in the milk, and if the baby can be allergic, or it can give me give him colics. So with dairy, I was really, really cautious because I didn't know if it was true or not. Some mm-hmm. midwives tell you it's true. Some some tell you no, it's not. It's actually very good for you because it will make the milk fattier, so the baby would be happier. So I didn't know. I went for the the safe one, which was chicken. But the bulk was this was grain, the, this sticky brown rice. They told me this is the best for lactating women. But I could see that the baby was not very satisfied with my milk. It would latch constantly. And I know that in the first weeks, the baby latches constantly. It's normal just to make your milk come. But he was upset. It was a little too much. But still, I, I mean, we managed to go through these stages. And when the baby was five months, I would start him on solid. So then my milk was not that much of an issue because he would start eating food. But I could see actually that my milk was not that fatty because I would pump some, put it in the fridge. And at that point, after a few hours, you can see that the milk, you have the fatty part at the top and the watery part at the bottom. And I could see that my fatty part, the layer of fat on top of the milk was really little. And I would try to eat more fat to make this layer thicker. So I was I would eat nuts and seeds and avocados a little bit and that wouldn't help and when I had my first baby I had um, a helper a lady was helping me and she was really um, on into microbiotic so that's why she was suggesting me how to cook this grain how to prepare them and then eventually feed them to the baby so I mm-hmm. put my baby also on this microbiotic type of weaning mm-hmm. so let's say I could have done better also but I was always afraid to put the baby on a strict vegan or vegetarian diet. Yeah, so just to be sore. clear, you were on this like chicken, rice, and spinach diet for like five months. And then about five months into exactly. the breastfeeding period when you started weaning the child is when you met this macrobiotic woman. And exactly. that's when you kind of went vegan. So five months yeah. into breastfeeding your first child, you went vegan. Yeah, because I mean, her... What she was telling me was so compelling, like the power of nutrition, how you can heal yourself through food. She told me that she healed her IBS through the microbiotic diet. She was basically vegan. She would eat and I would eat then like big, big bulk, uh, big bulk of cereals and legumes cooked in a certain way for very long. And uh, basically she ate some fish here and there. But I would say that her diet was pretty much vegan. And this is what got me into veganism. So if microbiotic is healthy, then vegan must be even healthier. So I started my journey into the vegan diet at that point, about six, seven months after my first child is born. Mm-hmm. And I tried different varieties of it, uh, like being heavy on fruit or heavy on starch, because I would follow Dr. McDougall as well, like uh, he's um, on YouTube, on his channels. So heavy on starch, heavy on fruit, and then more go on a try to be higher in protein, so more legumes, more soy. But I would say overall, I felt fine, but I had some symptoms looking back then, like the bloating, and then my cheeks would be really red, and around my mouth I would be really red, and I didn't know what was wrong. Like uh, veganism is supposed to make your skin glow and things like that. So I, I had some issue, but overall, I, I really, I was convinced of the diet. But um, What did your mother say I, when you were feeding him the grains? Like, exactly, did your mother have anything this to say? is my first child. That I, I went home and I had these sachets of amaranth and corn and this and that. And she told me, Nicole, your boy is not a chicken. Give him some food. <laughs> yeah, cause, and she was right. So when I got pregnant with my second, and overall, the breastfeeding thing went on for three years with my first boy. So overall, I could say that I kept up with it because I know it was nutritious for him. Was 
healthy at least on the immunity part of thing like not to get him uh, let him be sick that often uh, thanks to the uh, the immunity that is in the breast milk uh, so when i got pregnant with my second i was already two years into veganism in different varieties of it and uh, the pregnancy i would say it was 95 percent vegan i would say because i had cravings for butter and salmon especially so fat animal fat and i would act on those cravings Ooh, that faro yeah. island scottish salmon man on the grill. yeah i thought yeah i went on the, like uh, on the best quality i could find because i know that salmon can be can be a little bit toxic if you if you don't source it uh, mm. at the best so I went for high quality salmon and butter, Kerrygold. I always had this, this butter even for my, my husband and, and, and my other child. And I, so I went for this food. But that was really a, a minimum amount of, of the food I was eating overall during, the, during every single day. But I would have this craving and I would, I would eat. Maybe at that point I would eat a, a big amount of it, like um, two big uh, spoonfuls of butter, a big piece of salmon. So there like was still some sense in you left, like even though you were vegan, you you were like, my body needs. Yeah, you know, I still have some some common sense, and um, I, I I felt guilty because I mean, if if it's the baby that is asking me this, because throughout these two years prior, I was fine. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat anything, any animal food. Uh, so yeah, I was I would feel confident that the baby needs that, and I wouldn't feel guilty for like cheating on the vegan diet because you know it's not my religion. I would do it for health. I, I wonder what the vegans healthy. would tell you. What would they tell you to yeah, eat some eat tell... some coconut and supplement some algae oil? Like, is that what they would have said? Exactly. Well, I I, I had a lot of coconut oil and things like that. Yeah, but it's not the same. I mean, coconut oil is, is great. I still have it in my kitchen, but I do have butter and I eat it regularly because I want it. Now I, I'm, I feel I'm more in tune with my body because I eat what I want. It's not that I have to do a, a lot of preparation before, like uh, prepping potatoes and this and that. It's just it's so much easier and it feels more natural that I just want a piece of meat with some butter, just have it, it's, it's quick, it's good for me and I feel it. So uh, back to the pregnancy, it was uh, during delivery, mm, things were starting to get a little bit more difficult, definitely more difficult than with my previous one, which is strange because usually the body knows what it's doing and it's faster and easier. But the baby was suffering, his heartbeat was going low uh, for every contraction and it wouldn't go back up. So they're starting to be worried and eventually the, the team came in and they were talking me through a C-section. So we were very close to that, but at that point I was almost in the process of giving birth. So they gave me a chance, let's say, and then the baby came out fine in a... In a in a good span of time, they were happy with that. So I avoided the C-section, but it was very close. So the baby, uh, the baby is born at this point, and uh, he is not crying. But you know, there are these five, ten seconds that seem so long because you just want to hear this, this, this voice. You know, this shout. So the baby would uh, hesitate to cry, and then I, the baby would cry, and they would give him to me. And I could see that uh, he was cold and he was bluish. He didn't look really all right, but he was apparently. And uh, but they took uh, some a blood sample from from him to see if something was wrong. And that first night, actually, the baby never slept, which usually after birth they sleep. They are fine the first night, the first 12, 24 hours they are quite sleepy. But the baby wouldn't sleep. I would hold him all night. And I could see that he was thirsty, like um, around his mouth. I would give him the breast, obviously. But at first, you don't have, you just have colostrum, which is basically a few drops of a very thick, thick consistency. So, and he was thirsty. So at the, in the morning, uh, I called the midwife immediately. I was quiet during the night, but then I called her. And I said, please check on my baby because he's not right. He, I think he's really thirsty. Uh, so have a look. 
and really in that in that minutes maybe after 10 minutes the pediatrician came in in my room with the results of the blood test and the baby basically had very high hematocritus it was really dehydrated and the the, the condition is called polycythemia so basically the, basically the red blood cell count it's too high way too very high. thick blood very thick so they took him away and he went to NPICU to intensive care. He was there for five days on a drip until he recovered, until his blood count uh, came back normal. But then I would, we would go to the hospital every week or every two weeks for checking on him for like two months. And in that time, I was breastfeeding him, but it wasn't very successful. I mean, with the first, I struggled a little bit the first couple of months but then it went better and in, in this case it was the other way the more we were into it the more it didn't work and by didn't work I mean that uh, also through pumping I could see that my supply was low that the, the, the fat was low on the milk and overall it was like making him cranky making him fussy he was gassy because I would eat way too much veggies and even though I was trying to be healthy you know I would eat chia seeds flax seeds for these omega-3s I would eat oats nuts and seed and seeds and this and that and um, I thought it was great my diet and it took me so much effort to prepare my meals while caring for two children and my mother-in-law was here in Malta with me at that time and she told me as Nicole sorry if to telling you that but this diet is, is not good for him it is affecting him he's gassy you should eat some meat you should eat some fish just normal things and I remember craving bone broth so bad even though I almost didn't know the taste of it but I had this craving but I wouldn't go for it I would go for vegetable stock instead which is not quite much the same and I would just give up breastfeeding, basically. And I went for HA formula. And this was a, a Dr. McDougall suggestion, because he says that in one of the lectures, not to put the baby on soy formula, but to put him on HA formula. So that's what happened. And the baby was fine overall, but I really missed that I didn't breastfeed. It's, it's this like maternal bond that I have with my other two children. It's, I don't have it with him. So that was really disappointing. But still, I, I would keep going with veganism at this point. And eight months into that, um, well, I was having postpartum depression. And I was, I was treated for it. I went on antidepressants about four months after the baby was born. I started um, SSRI, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, this type of... Um, of antidepressant because I was feeling yeah really I didn't have energy especially mental energy mental focus it was really hard to take care of the kids and yeah I struggled and eight months uh, after my second baby is born I got pregnant with my third and this was really overwhelming it was not planned and it was really overwhelming because I just had you know these moments I realized I have to do something, I have to change or it's going to be really tough because I, I can barely keep up with two, can you imagine to keep up with three? So I thought like uh, I need to change up things and my husband would also support me on that and about, I would say I, I was about four months pregnant, I switched, I made that switch almost overnight because I, I understood what what I needed and what I wanted. And even before veganism, before microbiotic, before everything, I heard about Dr. Weston A. Price, that he was a dentist, he traveled the world, he would look at this traditional population, eating their traditional food and how they were healthy, uh, thriving. So I thought, you know, maybe this guy was into something. So I would just look back, try to gather some, some information. Also, Adjanus von der Planitz. I, I, I watched some of his videos and read something uh, on this primal diet, and I just changed completely. And I am so much happier. And the pregnancy was great. 
I gained my energy back. So I was able to take care, to be pregnant and at the same time take care of a toddler and uh, almost five years old. And um, I would say that my symptoms went pretty quickly. I was start to feel better mentally, like more calm, relaxed, you know, just just feeling normal again. Because like I was always angry, like anger was a big one for me. I would really... Uh, freak out real quick and this is of course not good when you have children you need to keep yourself together at all times that was hard so the mental clarity and the calmness is started to came back real quick and I would eat butter I would I would eat red meat for the first time it was also you know I, I, almost a new experience going to the butcher to the butcher and ask for this type of meat it was also new for me but I just I, you know I just did it so I said this is good for me so I tried liver and butter and slowly I would incorporate more and more eggs I would almost never eat eggs I would try to find the best organic eggs I could get and eat them I felt so nourished and I would say I would cut back on greens and vegetables and fruits almost drastically and feeling way better my skin went like the redness it calmed down so quickly and I thought it was the tomatoes you know these like uh, they are nightshades they are really harsh even on the digestive system and I would eat a lot of them because they are really cheap in here in Malta so my skin went like uh, the texture of it the, the thickness this I could see immediately my skin was so much better and uh, my hair starting growing healthier my teeth I, I would struggle me with my teeth they were pretty yellowish yellowish looking I would google like yellow teeth vegan many times because that was a big one like my smile because oh, people used to tell me oh, you have a nice smile and at that time I didn't have it my, my teeth were not good so my teeth went back like on this bright white almost like um, real quick and I would feel better mentally at the point that consulting with my GP and with the midwives I would uh, slowly going off my meds so I stopped having the the need for antidepressants at that point I felt confident enough that I was really feeling better and the delivery went really well it was real quick I checked in in the hospital at 8.30 p.m. and the baby was in my arms at 9.45. So real quick delivery, really healthy baby, healthy looking, nice color, nice and chubby, healthy weight. And, you know, I would just cuddle him and that it would latch and everything went so smoothly. Really, I was so glad. For the first time, I really enjoy because he, he never had colic. He's the first one out of three, I have to say. Never suffered of colic. And he would just be content overall and, and happy. And I did the same experiment. So I pumped my milk to see how much I have, how thick, how fat it is. And that now there is a nice thick layer of fat. I would say 25 ml out of 60. So I'm really happy with that. So I can see that the milk is nutritious, even though I'm eating a really, I would say not that large amount of food. I'm eating a smaller portion of food, but in this food, that is all I need. And more nutrients. Food. Exactly. It's more nutrient dense. That's the thing. And even now that uh, I am starting to give him some solids, I am following the Western A Prize principle for winning children. So he is having even, uh, apart from the milk, very different food from his brother. So, and he's overall the more most content baby I've ever seen. It's really great. So I will keep breastfeeding as long as I can, um, as long as I feel comfortable and things like that. And uh, yeah, this is my experience. Do you want to go briefly over the Western price, like what you actually feed your baby? Do you want to talk about that for a little bit for any yeah, curious mothers? He says, uh, well, the principles are that you have to uh, give him animal food as a first food and not starch as opposed to the standard like feeding schedule because they don't have amylase. 
to digest it. So it would upset them and it would constipate them. So not even a sweet potato is great until the baby is about eight, nine months. Um, so this is the principle. While on the opposite side, animal food is really easy to digest, especially you know, if it's properly cooked and blended. It's really easy on the baby's stomach. So you some meat and some fat, a little bit of, they say, hot liver oil or a little bit of liver or butter. These are the foods to start the baby on, not... Uh, powder rice i don't know how it's called baby cereals not this type they of talk about like do they talk about cereals egg yolks too. and fish eggs too exactly yes egg yeah. yolks when the baby reaches about uh, one this because of allergy yeah. problem so if the baby has a reaction to the egg and is just five six months old then it's better not to risk it and introduce it later but definitely after the year they need to have uh, slightly cooked egg yolks is highly recommended and fish so what I mean, what that pretty much achieves is, you know, you're making sure the baby has plenty of vitamin A for development. You're making exactly. sure the baby has the omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA in higher amounts. And by consuming those foods in your diet yourself, you're ensuring that the breast milk has those nutrients too. Exactly. And, uh, That's what I do. It's both for me and for him. So he's having this healthy food uh, from two sources, which is great. I'm really happy. Did you want to touch on... Uh, in Umbria, they have some very traditional dishes, don't they? Uh, yes, related to uh, they are very, very, very good. We have very, very good pork because still a few families do that in their in their home. You know, they they like they grow the the pork for one year and then they butcher him. They butcher it at home and they would eat some parts really on the spot. They would cut it open and some parts of the intestine they have to be eaten like just a few minutes after. After he's dead, and uh, you will eat them on the spot. And then they would start, you know, to process everything. And we eat everything of the animal. There is almost no waste from life, from our whole, the whole animal. So we have pork, we have uh, sheep. So we have like sheep milk and cheese that you can get raw. Very high fat. Pork. Very high yeah, fat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, like healthy animal, uh, healthy animals, these animals are grazing. They are like out, uh, like they're out in the sun, they're grazing. So the, the products that you're getting from them, the milk is really healthy. It's really good. So and then this, you this had the baby goats too and the wild boar? Exactly. Wild boar, yes, because they are, they are like pests, you know, they are everywhere. So they actually encourage people to hunt them down because otherwise they create problems. So wild boar is, is a big one, but not everybody is able to process it in the in the proper way. Mm. Even the like even the grains you were eating and a lot of the produce you were eating, like there's a big belief in Italian wheat as opposed to other wheat. Yeah, definitely. When I would go grocery shopping, I would always go for Italian pasta. I mean, and I mean Italian wheat grown in Italy, even because of the different a pesticide that they use in Italy they are a, li a little bit more strict they are, there is no glyphosate then I don't know if now Monsanto came to Europe through the buyer so I don't know now how, how they're gonna get away with with everything but definitely we, we think that the wheat grown on Italian soil is, is the best mm. that was what I would go for but definitely in a larger amount too much too much of it mm -hmm. That's why us Italians are shorter than everyone else. All that wheat. Exactly, because we eat a lot of grains. And we do. It's true. So, Nicole, is there any, uh, like, messages or anything else you wanted to touch on? I mean, I think we really covered this and your whole story really well and got a lot of the points across from, you know, the evident problems you had when you were younger on a plant-based diet lacking in kind of animal foods, how that translated throughout all three of your pregnancies, and just some really interesting things that were thrown in there from, you know, the fattiness of the milk to the ease of the birthing process to even the traditional foods. Yeah, well, you know, on YouTube, these vegan mothers are quite popular. It's and unfortunate. Like what, unfortunately, what I eat in a day and this and that. But now, looking back and with the perspective that I have on things now, I can see that these diets are extremely poor and extremely dangerous both for them and for the child. 
and um, I know that some uh, vegans, mother, they ended up having a quite cranky child. I don't want to make names or things like that, but the the child is fussy, is making, is crying too much, is is never settled, and I think it's lack of nutrition. Like in the video that you you, you put up some days I ago, they say that too. the yeah, baby the has a weeks. rush. Yeah. yeah, because the baby is hungry because it doesn't get the fat soluble vitamins. Mm -hmm. But I believe that these women get cravings because it's part of the pregnancy. You do get cravings. So I just hope that they, even if they want to do it behind closed doors, that they would would act on those cravings. Because yeah, the unfortunate really thing is they might justify those cravings as just part of pregnancy and say, oh, I don't need to eat those foods. and uh, I think overall, if you know we're going to do anything, I mean, just to keep it really positive and hopefully open these women up to the importance of these vitamins. I mean, well, unfortunately, I, I commented on a few videos, and I just said that you know, if you don't feel like eating meat, which might be a shock if you're an ethical vegan or things like that, just to reach out, you know, for egg yolks, um, some collagen powder, protein powder, you know, these type of things, butter. Because you do need, I mean, a pregnant woman do need, does need this type of food. You're not, and especially I would say a breastfeeding mother, because eventually when the baby's in the womb, it would get, it would deplete the mother, the mother's body and get what he needs eventually. But then when he's out, he needs this type of nutrition. And, you know, in Italy, there were cases where baby, like the some children died from the vegan diet. Oh, no, we could, Milan. yeah, I mean, you guys can Google that stuff, and it's it's really unfortunate, and, you know, we, we literally have, you know, we have babies that are even dying in some cases. You guys can Google vegan Die, baby yeah. death. Uh, there's many, many examples on YouTube of uh, vegan moms having problems during pr pregnancy, and then even after the pregnancy, they'll start feeding the kid soy when it's only a few months old, and at what point do we ask, you know, how blind do you have to be? Really, you know, it's unfortunate. And I mean, if babies dying and them being unhealthy and developmentally delayed and these vegan women noticing all these problems they're having, if that's not enough, then, you know, what is, you know, at what point is it going to, at what point is it going to be so extreme that, uh, you know, what are you going to have to, like, I don't want to mention things. I'm sure there are many, many women who have been in the unfortunate position of having miscarriages, but uh, I think, you know, that's that's a bit of an understatement with if we look at and there's some data and statistics that I posted on Twitter, I think in the past month or so, showing how miscarriage rates have gone up, infant mortality has gone up, you know, autism is, rates are going up, child cancerhood rates are increasing. And I ask myself every day, you know, at what point are people going to start saying, you know, this shouldn't this be getting better? Shouldn't, you know, what's what's going on? And I mean, you know, removing animal foods and reduction of animal foods kind of correlates directly with a lot of these negative things that are happening. I agree with that. I, I don't know. I couldn't imagine anything worse that puts your child's life at risk or what. I, don't I, I think know. it's part of it is just people are it's so ingrained. Period. They're ingrained in convention. They're ingrained in what we've been told our whole lives. And it's almost impossible to get out of that. Uh, you know, it's this is not like a discussion about necessarily religion specifically. This is not a discussion about diet. Uh, it's so hard to get away from your culture and what you've been taught your whole life that I think, uh, you know, over 99 percent of people will never probably even more than that uh, will, will never, ever kind of break that tradition, especially in regards to their diet. Um, Nicole, did you have anything else uh, you wanted to touch on? Well, that's uh, all the symptoms that I had uh, on a vegan diet, they are gone. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the mental health was a big one for me, plus the bloating, the fatigue, uh, the skin problems, just the skin not looking right, uh, my hair looking thin, my teeth looking yellowish, uh, it's gone. So I, I, I'm like feeling much better feeling really much better, more focused, mental clarity, all these things I can definitely noticing. And even my husband told me that he, li he likes me much better now. 
and he I mean, can see a big improvement. How much? How much can it hurt? Just have have fish a few times and see if what happens. Like really, like any vegan out there, you know, if you eat fish, if you eat meat, if you do something for a few days just for nu certain nutrients, see how it goes, and you notice a drastic change. I mean, pretty hard to deny something like that. But what are you gonna do? You can't really convince people. Um. I guess uh, I guess that's really gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, I did want to thank uh, so many of you guys for watching, and I do want to say it again: keep everything on a positive note. But do uh, you want to say goodbye to everyone? Let's, yeah, uh, bye guys. Bye guys. Take Ciao. care. Bye back from Malta. Mwah.